Wonderlands launches March 25th and 2K invited me to play an early version of an optional area in the game called Mount Craw, which has its own main and side quest, boss fights and a lot of loot. And there should be way more areas like this in the final game. We could test out two of the six classes. We found even legendaries. Like I was really able to get a good idea of what Wonderlands has to offer. So I want to share the most important info I learned that is handy to know before playing. Thanks to 2K for sponsoring the video. Totally check the special link in the video description to learn way more about Wonderlands. And yes, maybe you have the same feeling I had when I started out. It feels very familiar at first sight. Good to note is that the UI might still change from what you see here in this preview build, but they totally went with an if it ain't broke, don't fix it approach. So you will very easily be able to find what you're looking for if you played Borderlands before. Of course, there are some tweaks in the inventory menu. For example, we now namely see six gear slots with two locked in our play session. And next to the ranged weapons, we also have a big spot for the melee weapons. And that's really the thing, while you can easily pick up Wonderlands if you played a lot of the previous games in the Gearbox series, there are some major tweaks that make it feel completely different and the big one is that melee is now way more fleshed out. For one, you can now use it to open the many chests, you can use it to send a barrel towards the enemy and you also have certain main mission objectives that require you to smash some things. But it's also a pretty viable option during combat to jump and press the melee button for a smash on the ground. You can also slash enemies in the face so they sometimes drop on the floor so you can deal even more damage depending on your weapon. I found a ton of different melee weapons while playing. There are four variants that feel different mostly in terms of attack speed and within each variant there are different classes too. So just like the ranged weapons there is a ton of variety in terms of melee tools as well. Like I for example found the frostbite of the crush which slows down enemies on a hit which was pretty nice and powerful and this one is crazy I found a legendary goblin pickaxe with the time is money friend perk meaning that my melee hits would spawn gold and if I would then pick up that gold I got increases for movement speed spell cooldown rate and the action skill cooldown rate which would stack as well also, when hitting enemies with the weapon, I would restore health and ward, which the shield in this game. Really, with a legendary melee weapon, the melee systems were even more fun. And if you really want to make melee your thing, they can, for example, pick the Stabomancer class. One skill, namely, gives you a guaranteed crit on your next melee hit after scoring a kill. So, they are kind of forced to play around with melee weapons more but this class also has a ranged spinning blade you can use to take out enemies we could also try the graveborn claws that is followed around by a pet they can also sacrifice health for damage or protection depending on the action skill you choose and there's also one skill i could unlock a little later in the skill tree giving you a chance to summon a hydra on a kill which will then deal damage to the enemies close by. Pretty awesome. Wanna touch on all the other classes in the game as well and more legendary loot and other things we found. Of course, if you liked the video so far, then leaving a like on it would really help us out and subscribe because we got way more Wonderlands content planned. Another more melee focused class is the Berserker with a special spinning attack to hit multiple enemies and of course the occasional freeze. The Clawbringer can use a Mjolnir style weapon to deal damage and of course then the trick is to also hit an enemy when the weapon is returning to your hand and if you like to use a special bow that can shoot seven arrows at once or want to have a special mushroom man companion then you might want to go with the spore warden a cool part is that halfway through the game you can also choose a secondary class next to the one you chose at the beginning. So every class has one skill tree, but then with multi-classing, you unlock a second skill tree for the second class you pick. And while you can only equip one of the then four available action skills, passive bonuses like companions do stack. So you can then have two pets running around. And good to note is that the first class you pick is set for your character, but you can switch the second one out at any time after finishing the main story. I personally think I'm going for the spell shots because they can wield two spells at the same time because these spells that have replaced the grenades from Borderlands are a real game changer. So every class has access to one spell similar to the grenades, but the big difference is that they don't run out. But instead you're on on a cooldown you can kind of compare it to flex rack attack 
with some spells having multiple charges as well. And in the demo, we could already find a lot of different spells that all seem very varied. They're also linked to an elemental type, so you have to swap them out from time to time depending on the enemy you're fighting. And being able to spam these quite often totally changes the familiar Borderlands style gameplay up in interesting ways. So you can get new spells in their dedicated fending machine and next to one focused on weapons and there's also a fending machine for wards and gear items but spells drop very often too. So just like with the grenades from Borderlands these spells come in different rarities too and we found a legendary barrel maker which lets you summon these barrels you find everywhere in the levels as well but with this spell you can just summon one out of thin air and unleash them onto your enemies as you please. Another legendary we found was a ring which increased the effect by 50% when your gun is low on ammo which could be pretty impactful as well like with the increased amount of gear slots which can contain legendary items too, varied spells, melee weapons, multi-classing and the similar type of Borderlands guns there really seems to be even more customization this time around. For this demo we could only pick two pre-made characters but in the full game you can completely go crazy with the look of your fate maker and there are no options locked behind a gender. We sadly have no footage of the character creator yet, just some shots of what your creations might look like but what is interesting is that there's also an overdrive mode where you can really go crazy. You want a giant nose that clips through the giant lips, you want a helmet that clips through a mask, you want your eyes rotated 90 degrees or to have one eye rotated differently than the other eye, go for it. And this by the way according to Gearbox you can even pick a voice out of four personalities and these personalities also have two options and if you grew tired of your voice at some point or any other customization feature they can change it at any time at a quick change kiosk. Customization items also seem to drop way more often compared to Borderlands 3. Next to emotes you now also have gear, banners and statues you can see throughout the game. Your banner flag, for example, will be placed on the overworld map if you have completed something there. And as you can see, this is also where you can see a tiny, super deformed version of your own character. And via this map, you can go to the different regions and inside the regions themselves, you also find a lot of hidden collectibles. Way more so than in the previous games. The most important ones are totally the lucky dice spread throughout the map. There were 19 in this optional region alone and the higher the number you roll, the better the loot. But also, if you find more of these, your overall loot chance across the game will also be increased, making them even more valuable. But there were way more collectibles, some we could not use yet, because they likely have to do with the tavern, or sort of sanctuary style hub we have in Wonderlands. Exploration overall though seems way more rewarding this time around. And the most fun activity was totally the combat challenge I could activate after interacting with this special obelisk. This would spawn in a lot of enemies followed by a boss as well. And this one dropped the legendary for me. So totally worth keeping an eye out for these obelisks. And I also feel like I've just scratched the surface looking at the variety of locations in recent trailers and other gameplay. I also enjoyed the extra narrative layer because next to the characters you're interacting with during missions you also constantly hear dialogue between Tiny Tina and the people who are actually playing the D&D style game that you exist in. And they totally don't take it very seriously which totally leaves more room for the humor which was kind of lacking in Borderlands 3 in some cases but seems to be back here in Wonderlands. I can't wait for the full game, again we played an early level character, I really think that the more you play the further into the game the more the game will shine but we will have to wait and see for that if you have any questions leave them in the comments down below i will do my best to answer them and again subscribe because we got way more wonderlands content planned a like on the video would really support the channel and totally check out our previous wonderlands video with even more new details from recent trailers and gameplay for now though i will speak to you in the next one goodbye